and welcome to National Focus. I am Aliyah Martin. In the headlines, Prime Minister carried to focus on the effects of climate change as he addresses the Boa Forum for Asia 2024. New site manager for geothermal power plant to arrive this week as plans for the project remain on track. And Mr. Peter Paddington Libla becomes Dominica's 15th living centenarian. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt arrived in Boa, Highland Province on Wednesday, where he will address the Boa Forum for Asia 2024. The Prime Minister is leading a high-level government delegation to China to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between Dominica and the People's Republic of China. He will address the opening ceremony for the summit, which brings together world leaders to expand political dialogue and international cooperation in the search for comprehensive and effective solutions to global problems. The Prime Minister is expected to call on attending heads of government to strengthen cooperation and solidarity among countries to provide effective responses to common financial, economic, and social crises. The Dominican leader will point to gross inequalities between developed and developing countries and the effects of climate change which threaten the existence of low-lying small island developing states like Dominica. Prime Minister Skerritt and his delegation will make a final stop in Shanghai, China on Friday. In an effort to advance their mandate and amplify the voices of Caribbean destinations, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, has highlighted the exotic island of Dominica in a special feature with Honorable Denise Charles at Roots Americas 2024. Dominica has recently emerged in popularity as a premier ecotourism destination. Emphasis was placed on the unique tourism product being offered by the island. COVID worked well for Dominica. I know most people said COVID was a challenge, but what it did, it made it, it, it brought an emergence of, of tourists and visitors being more environmentally conscious. And being the third largest speaking, um, English speaking island in the Caribbean, Dominica is very spacious. So if you come and you want to go snorkeling, it's not a crowded destination. We don't promote mass tourism. We are more focused on niche, niche tourism. So if you like adventure, if you like snorkeling, you like diving, Dominica is the place to be. We have numerous um, rivers, hot springs, waterfalls. So we are destination targeting nature lovers and people that care about the environment and sustainable tourism. A number of initiatives have been implemented to invest in Dominica's tourism product, such as facilitating greater air access and expanding the hotel room stock on the island. Dominica has been emerging as a strong nature destination. We are actually aiming to be the number one nature island in the world. And recently we made a major investment by extending our runway to make it safer for more airlines to land in Dominica. And that project is about 98% complete. So we felt it was a perfect opportunity to come to Roots Americas and strengthen our relationship with existing airline partners and build new relationships. So Dominica has been expanding and growing. We have some new hotels on the horizon. We have two five-star resorts, which will be open this year by the end of 2024. We have Ocean Edge Resort. We have Sanctuary Echo Resort. And so we want everyone to know that if you're looking for a destination to relax, to rejuvenate, to connect to nature, to dive, and just to have a family vacation or group vacation or school, 
visit Dominica. Many measures are being put in place to increase regional and global connectivity for the travel destination. As you know, intra-regional connectivity has, is a major challenge and we have seen a, a down swing in the number of visitors coming from um, respective islands nearby. But with the strengthening of partnership with Inter-Caribbean, Wind Air, and then soon we're going to launch a new airline in Dominica, Sunrise Airways. We are hoping to strengthen that connectivity. One of our key markets is the French West Indies, Martinique and Guadeloupe. A lot of people from France and Martinique and Guadeloupe visit Dominica and as you know, they come by ferry, but it's only 15 minutes by air and most, a lot of the travelers are looking for that connectivity. So we're looking to increase our partnership in, um, from, Dom, from Martinique and Guadeloupe to Dominica, as well as St. Martin, Dominican Republic. We have opportunities to grow. We have a lot of people from Asia and Dubai who want to visit Dominica and looking for a same day connection. So we're working on some relationships to strengthen that connectivity and increase connectivity so you can access Dominica at least same day until we get our international airport. Until it is completed, then people will be able to have non-stop service from many major airports to Dominica. The recommencement of flights from American Airlines for the upcoming summer and winter season is a strong indicator of the diligence of the Nature Isle to improve the tourism product. Caribbean Tourism Organization is the region's tourism development agency with 25 Dutch, English and French country members and is geared at leading sustainable tourism within the region. Site manager of the geothermal power plant to be constructed in the Rosa Valley is due to arrive on island this week and will be resident here for two years. General Manager of the Dominica Geothermal Development Company, Mr. Fred John, says everything is on track and moving smoothly so far to where the power plant is concerned. The transmission network will link the geothermal power plant to the hydro power stations. Fonkole is part of the project. There are two parts to this. The first one is to build a 10 megawatt geothermal power plant in Loda. And the second part is to build a transmission network from Loda to Foncole, but also um, connecting the hydro system to that as well. So if I can maybe just tackle the power station for a minute, I think the last time we had any public update on this was really during Parliament in December when um, parliamentary approval was sought for a guarantee. But in a nutshell, um, in December, the government of Dominica and Domlek signed a, an agreement for the development of this power plant, and that was with Alma Technologies and its subsidiaries. Those agreements were signed on December 5, 2023. So the first major update on this is that on January the 4th, 2024, those agreements became effective. And that, that's really important because the clock starts, the clock started with those agreements becoming effective. And one of the most significant aspects of timing is the commissioning date, which is 24 months after effectiveness. So, um, so that, that, that's in progress, the clock, the clock has started. Mr. John says there is quite a lot happening in the background at this time. We are in the detailed engineering phase of, of the works and um, probably even more, I guess, exciting is the fact that some of the long lead time items, as they call them, have already, the procurement is in process for those, just, just to make sure that, that, that um, the project is completed on time. He spoke of the significance of the transmission network as a critical component of the overall geothermal project. The lines that we have in the Rosa Valley now, the Dominic, the Dominic lines, those lines are not able to move the 10 megawatts or move it efficiently to, to Foncole and then onwards to the rest of the island. So there is a, an effort, a parallel effort to build a new transmission network for, for Dominica. If you allow me to just go into a little technical detail here, the, the lines which are used right now are sort of 11,000 volts. What we are building, we are stepping up to two, two different voltages, one at 33,000 volts and one at 69,000 volts. So it's, it's really a, a significant change in the infrastructure 
for power transmission in Dominica. More on the geothermal project update in our next newscast. Mr. Peter Paddington Nibla of Bourne has joined one of Dominica's most elite groups of citizens as he celebrated his 100th birthday on Wednesday. President of Dominica, Her Excellency Silvani Burton, and other members of cabinet joined the family and friends of Mr. Libla as he celebrated this huge milestone in his life with a gathering at Cabritz. Mr. Peter Libla is currently the 15th living centenarian in Dominica. Her Excellency Burton presented Mr. Paddington Libla with a birthday card. On behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and on behalf of Mr. Burton, my husband, and myself, I wish to extend to you my congratulations and good wishes on the occasion of celebrating your 100th birthday today, Wednesday, the 27th of March, 2024. May the good Lord continue to bless you. And this message has been engraved into this presentation for you today. It has been placed in this, so you are able to have it and um, to hang it up in your, in, at your home as the message from the President of Dominica on your 100th birthday. Parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth constituency, Honorable Fenella Wenham Shepherd, is elated to have shared in this momentous celebration. My first meeting with Mr. Paddington is I have met a legend. Because when he told me his age, I looked at Mr. Paddington. Mr. Paddington, I wonder if you remember that. And I said, You sure you're that old? And he told me, Of course, child. And now, he didn't know me. But they've always said that your past identifies who you are. And I had to tell him who my father was. And so it is very important that we date back into his 100 years. Mr. Libla is happy to have seen 100 years of life. He credits his long life to eating healthy throughout. Provision, long provision. I grew up in that, since I'm a little boy. I grew up in that, and I like to talk to you now. Young provision, the feed, the dashing, the yam, the plantain. You see, all my food is one pot. Then just make a pot, everything put it in one pot. And is that I do it all the time, all the time. All my years, I stopped it with, since 1960. I used to eat meat, I used to drink, I used to gamble, I will put all that aside. You're watching National Focus, more when we return. Welcome back. The highly anticipated Jazz and Creole Festival is set to bring vibrancy to the town of Portsmouth, on the weekend of May 4, 2024. This year, in addition to the main event traditionally held at the Cabritz National Park, a variety of fringe events will also be hosted in the vicinity. Portsmouth will come alive from the Wednesday, which is the first, with jazz and karaoke at the lunch in Picard. Right after, we head to reggae night at Roots Bar, Roots Reggae Bar in Tatan. Thursday, the Portsmouth Town Council will awaken the streets of Portsmouth with Pan and Jazz, where the Portsmouth Culture Pan, also Pan in Harmony, and key performers from Portsmouth and surrounding areas will grace the stage with some sweet, melodious, and harmonious voices and music, and some other acts are still loading. Delicious delicacies and drinks will be available for sale as well. On Friday, the Borough Square Lime will come and Saturday, we welcome the Caribe Hype event in Picard, Jazz in Paradise at Paradise Valley in Bonn, and Purple Turtle Family Fundy, quite a variety of options. And of course, our breakfast village will come alive on Sunday morning from 6 a.m. before heading to the main event of Jazz and Creole. Over the years, the event has attracted patrons from across the region to join in celebrating Dominica's culture. 
The mayor sees this as a perfect opportunity for entrepreneurs to capitalize on the event and elevate their businesses. If you're looking for services, from lodging to car rental, saloons, spas, makeup, dining, anything, we've got you. Check out the Facebook pages of the Portsmouth Town Council, Portsmouth Town Council, EST 1954, or what's happening in Porsi, among others. A lot of information will be available there as the weeks unfold. So by the sound of my voice, you can tell that I am excited. And by now, I expect that you too are excited. So once again, on behalf of the entire town of Portsmouth, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each of you. The 13th edition of Jazz and Creole will showcase Jamaican and American reggae artist Elaine as a headline act. The lineup will also include Dominica's own Mikel Henderson and the Swinging Stars Band, Leanne Lely Octave Leta, a daughter of Dominican soil, and the singing sensation and violinist Mappy from Reunion Island. This year's festival will be themed Rhythms of the Nature Isle, with the fashion theme being Creole Fusion. Nine years ago this year, the community of Pitit Savan was severely devastated by Tropical Storm Erica, leading to the relocation of the community after it was declared a special disaster area. More in this report with Julian Morris. Dominicans awoke Thursday, August 27, to flooding and mudslides as a result of Tropical Storm Erica, which dumped over 10 inches of rain on the island in just six hours. The weather system resulted in over 10 confirmed deaths and over a dozen missing, especially in the Pilit Savan community. GIS News spoke with some of the survivors of Erica, who are now residents of the settlement community in Bellevue Chopin. Gilbert Thomas, 78, has been living in the resettlement community for three years now and lives alone. But in spite of that, he says he's enjoying his new home and surroundings. Yeah, mm -hmm. I live there alone. Everybody, there most people, they are living alone. It's not me alone that living alone, there, alone in the area there. There are four, 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 three houses, four houses. He live in the island. Mr. Thomas says he's still able to farm in Pilit Savan. Yeah. For farming or? Yeah, yeah. I have a breadfruit tree, my jelly tree. Yeah. So, but, you, so you can go but, back there for your... But I, I, I miss it a lot, but I still go in there. When it comes to his new home, Mr. Thomas has few words, but he is direct. This one, I like it. I mean it. like it very much. Mm. <laughs> In his senior years, Mr. Thomas has no children, but having other relatives living nearby makes life easier and more enjoyable. Uh, my sister house is making, I go in my sister house, I'm making the whole living my sister house. is young bathing, is young um, breakfast, lunch, and late in the afternoon, six o'clock, I come back in my home. He looks forward to spending time with his nieces and nephews who visit him occasionally. Thomas says with a house like this, he's not worried about the upcoming hurricane season. Some people talking, they say you're strong, but my sister have a nice thing, she has better strong from the, for this one, but I like, I can still pass a hurricane. If you are if a big hurricane, like um, one, one, 200, 200 miles, no, I think like that, I will, I, I will go my sister, but if it's 60 miles, 70 miles, 80 miles, I will still stay in my place. Stephanie Fontaine has been a resident of the Belvish Shumi settlement since 2020. Oh yeah, I find here is very safe. You know, we can be here with our windows, with our doors open. And I like here because it's very cool, you know, and cold and nice. Fontaine, who is originally from Fort saint jean says the climate in Belvis chopin is more conducive to farming. I've been a farmer all my life, and um, I have a little piece of land over there that I farm, you know, and I farm around the um, house too, you know, and... Um, here, you know, in Fosajo, it's very hot, so you need water to always give your plants to grow. But here, the, um, the temperature is cool and rain falls here nearly every day, so and the soil is very fertile. So whatever you plant here just grows crazily, grows well, you know? It's been a number of years since the relocation of the settlement, and the people have since gelled as a community, looking out for their neighbor. Yeah, it's good, you know, we have this neighborhood there, this small one, and um, everybody is together, you know, we, we are one, you know, 
sometimes. Like looking out for each other. Yeah, we look out for each other. Like if the neighbor, if it's like nine o'clock and the neighbor didn't see me, he'll come and knock on the door. What's, what's wrong with you? What's, you know, what's happening? And the neighbor you just come and talk to, I always look out for him because he's elderly and he lives alone. I live alone too, but you know, we look out for each other. Just like her neighbor, Mr. Thomas, Stephanie is pleased that her home is hurricane proof. Oh yes, um, um, somebody who built those single homes told me that they build the homes here with eight inch blocks. You know, the walls are eight inch blocks and the roof is concrete. It's concrete and plus they put galvanos on top. So whenever it's hurricane season, we, we around here in the single homes, we say, um, we will stay in our homes. The only problem is the windows, you know, windows may get broken and so. But we, don't, yeah, yeah. but we don't expect the wind to lift up the house and go with it like other times, you know. And that is peace of mind, yeah? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We believe the, the homes uh, can go for a Category 5 hurricane. You know, it would, uh, first of all, the roof is concrete, so we don't expect it to go, you know, and then we're inside or in the rain. So we feel good about that. She commends government housing revolution and its impact on the quality of life of citizens. I think it's a good idea, you know, especially a lot of people um, in Pidit Sava and Fishisha Bagatel, do be quality people that have homes here. They live in very small and unstable homes, you know, homes that would um, fall in any strong wind, you know, and um, another thing is a lot of um, families who are big, you know, you have a lot of people and grandchildren and children living in the same house and the government um, would give um, some of the children their own homes, you know, so you, now you haven't got too many people living in one house and... Um, people I, like their privacy when they grow up. Yeah, yeah, you know, so that's, that's a good thing. It's a good idea. Josephine Daru is a mother of five. She has been living in the new settlement for the last four years. At times I will feel a little coldness. I will feel cold in the afternoon. I always feeling cold, but is it cooler here than Pitit Savan? It is cooler here than Pitit Savan. So. Yes, yes, here is more cool than Pitit Savan. Do you like that or? I don't like the coolness, <laughs> no? I don't like no, it. No, but he the cool he, he, the yes, he likes. He likes the coolness, oh. but I do not like it, no? Okay. Mm -mm, I like my wife to be warm. Yes. Three of her children own homes in the settlement. Like her neighbors, Mrs. Daru is pleased with the sense of security she gets from the quality of the house provided under government's housing revolution. With my husband, he loves destruction. He loves, he loves the house. Because he said when hurricane, he hasn't got to run. He hasn't got to go no, at people's home anymore. He said that is home. Yeah, because, home yes, because I just tell him when hurricane comes, we have to go and meet the one in Rousseau. In one can feel we have to go by her because we, I don't want to stay here. He said, no, Makale, Makale, Piascote, Makale, stay at Kaimo. Kaimo is a hurricane shelter. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we are good. We are living good in Jesus' name. Yes, very nice. Very nice building, very nice structure. If you spend enough time in the community, it quickly becomes apparent that Tropical Storm Erica may have cost them a lot, but their sense of community is not lost. Every day when you wake up in the morning, we say hello, say morning, how are you doing? They would come and ask how Mr. how are you doing and so. That's very nice. And that is how we was in Petit Savan. The GIS team met Mr. Romal Rule, widely known in Petit Savan as Star, working in his backyard vegetable garden. Mr. Rule made it clear that making the adjustment to Belvis Chopin was a non-issue for him. Living here is a problem. Myself, I can live anywhere, so long I have health and life. I can live anywhere because I didn't, I didn't create the world. I was born in the world, on this planet Earth. And then, even though I was born, well, I was born from Fossesha, in Fossesha, and then I, my father bring me to Tisavan. I lived in Tisavan for many, many years, build my house, do business, taxi man, and then I, it was all right. But after the hurricane, I had no other choice. Not the hurricane, but the storm. Erica. So they had to look at us. I live in Louisville for the period of time, and then we get our house, and then I mean, here's not a problem for me. 
As was earlier mentioned, Mr. Rule is into subsistence farming and he's delighted that he was able to access a plot in Belleville Chopin to continue the practice. As I said, Mr. Monroe, Ian Monroe, gave me a piece of land there and make my garden and that's why I made my garden since I come here. And then that is wonderful of him. That all bless him always. You have a place in paradise. Mr. Rule is a leading example of someone who understands the importance of growing what we eat, a critical component in the fight against the rising cases of NCDs. I believe is what that keep me the way I am. Because since I was small but my mother home we used to my mother used to because my father was working. And then we used to work and grow veg, veg. So we always have veg. You know, we always had something from the backyard to the pot to the mouth. Wonderful. That was keeping us up to standard. But though I'm getting older now because of my age of 77. Cultural icon Athena Daru, widely known in the community as Antina, was also busy in her backyard garden. We do not only rely on other things, we do our own thing. We plant, as you can see, we have vegetables. Somebody gave us a piece of land, my husband and I. We, go there. we don't go there every day, but we go there when we need to go there. We clear the land, the two of us. We do, dig the land, we plant it, and we plant our dashing, tanya, yam, and everything. And then down below, we make our little carrot. We used to plant carrot, cucumbers, lettuce. We have five there. So life in Bellevue is not to say a bad life, as I said, is a bit. Now some people are complaining about feeling cold. Cold, 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 cold. Tutun can't you know, hair go blanket so, muta hair blanket so. But Morris tell you, no cold at all. We're not feeling cold. No one then the only time I felt more cold is when I'm during before Christmas. That time that time of year is always cold. So but otherwise we are happy. Athena turned seventy seven this month. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be alive. And I have to thank the government very much for all what they are doing for us. They did not leave us. Like some people were saying that if there was another country, my baby dad leave us on the lie. We're not doing nothing for us. But this government did not leave us alone, Julian. No. We stayed up there, or down there for five, four years. Yes, I stayed up down there for five years. And then everything was given to us. Everything. And then we are here. We are not paying us in at no time to the house. It is our house. She maintains her links with Pirit Savan, visiting the village on a weekly basis. One thing I'm thanking the government for, as I always tell people, if Honorable Skerritt did not want us to go back to Pirit Savan, he would not have employed, um, how do you call it, NEP. The people are there taking care of the road. If you go to be someone, no, you never say that place that is that people left. Taking care of the roads and then he build he build the bridge across the river. By you remember the cooperative? He build the bridge there. And uh, the only thing that is keeping us and, uh, and and the Dalis people too as well is the bridge they have to build they were supposed to build that bridge over the river. By Mamolina, when up Delis. So if they ever build that bridge, Maurice, life will be sweet with us. Thanks, Julian, for that report. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominique on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I am Aliyah Martin. Thank you for watching.